and welcome back to touring the Northwest here in American Truck Simulator. We are driving the same truck we were last time, the Peterbilt 362 Cab Over. I have a link to the truck down in the description below. It's a really, really good truck, and we were driving the Freightliner. I just got this, and I wanted to run it some. And it's beautiful, and it's a great truck. So, so this time we're going south from Colville, Washington, where we're picking up down into Idaho. We'll be hitting Idaho pretty soon, and we're going south down to Boise. It's going to take us down Highway 95, which is a really curvy and interesting part in Idaho. So I'm looking for, I've been looking forward to this. I actually alluded to this in the first episode of Touring the Northwest. Because I mentioned we'll be going through, you know, Oregon, Washington, and Northern California, and Idaho. When I was thinking Idaho, it was this highway that we'll be going down. Not the one we're on now. We're going to be taking, like I said, it's 95. Um, we're going to be going south on that through Idaho. And it's incredibly curvy and should be really scenic i'm looking forward to what we see on there so yeah it won't be too long before we get into idaho we gotta do some get out of this town here and such like that so anyway so here's the cab of our our new little peterbilt i like it a lot it's a good truck to drive it's a little trickier to back up because i'm used to driving longer trucks with hoods on them so i gotta kind of relearn where i need to stop you know for stop signs and things like that i can pull i gotta yeah i have a different view of the road is what i mean and backing up is a little bit trickier because it's a short truck so it backs up a little snappier so i'm being a little more careful with my backing and well there's a lot of things you have to adjust when you're driving a cab over a truck also the turns i have to take turns wider because the cab kind of yeah turns sharper so anyway i'm getting used to driving the truck and i like it a lot some nice custom options i like our little blue dashboard here the truck also has this is the first time i went with undercarriage lights on one of my trucks the truck is like lightly customized i call it a truck stop custom it's kind of custom but not too much but the paint job on the outside is so snazzy that old school paint job so i did put some blue underglow lights on it and there's some blue lights on the side of the cab too anyway enough about the truck this is a this right here this is a lot of the kind of scenery that we've been seeing up through northern washington a lot of times there's so many trees you can't really see the scenery but there was some excellent scenery last episode that was episode three yeah last episode and we're definitely we're definitely going to get out of the trees as we're going south through idaho we'll be getting out of the trees and i'm interested to see what all we'll see up here this road is insanely straight and high speed can compared to what we did last episode we spent a good deal of time going up a really curvy gravel road with switchbacks up a mountain and now here we got a pretty straight open road 60 miles an hour not bad <laughs> the last episode we never even hit an interstate at all I, i'm not sure we will this episode either to be honest i didn't i don't think we'll be hitting an interstate this one either which is cool if, if you want to see scenery roads like this are are going to be yeah key to that so we got to stop at a way station here all right almost immediately we have to stop at a way station last episode we were pretty light i think we were under 50,000 pounds last episode yeah so we got a little more weight i mean i'm still learning to drive the truck and now we got to drive it uh with about at the equivalent of two of the trailers I was driving last time. So yeah, but this truck, I mentioned this in the last episode, our GPS screen is a lot smaller, which has me looking at the actual gauges and the signs more, because I can't really read my speed on the GPS. I think it's okay up there. I can see the roads we're taking, but I can't read any of the print on it. So that's okay it was kind of like the lesson i learned in the freelander cascadia where i couldn't see the mirrors on the side and i found myself actually led to better enjoyment of the game and better driving because i found myself you know looking around the cab more as i drove so what i'm saying is hopefully maybe that smaller gps up there yeah, i'm still getting the hang of this truck will have me looking at the road signs and my gauges more yeah, so again, yeah, I'm learning to drive this truck and where I should brake, but also now this is our first heavy load. I mean, last episode was the first delivery with this truck. This episode is the first heavy delivery with this truck. 
So I got to kind of relearn where my breaking points are again. That's okay. It's all part of learning a new truck, you know. So we're going through, I think we may have already crossed into Idaho. And this may be, there's a town with a French name I won't try to pronounce. And that's not where we're at. Actually, I'm not sure what that says on the map up there. I was probably talking when I entered the town and didn't see. But there's a town with a weird French name somewhere. Probably after this town, maybe. Yeah, so we had a rest. So, I mean, we're good on fuel, and we had a rest last episode. So, of course, we got 400 miles ahead of us. We may have to rest. It's possible. We'll see. But for right now, anyway, we're freshly rested and ready for this trip. Yeah, I can't read what that town name is here. got a slow speed limit through it. That's for sure. I mean, I, so I assume we're still in Washington because I think the next, the first town we're going to hit in Idaho is that one town I can't pronounce the name of. Okay, let's see. Do I ha I think I stopped at the right place. Yeah, more or less. I gotta, I can pull, I gotta remember I can pull it farther with this truck, but then again, if I pull it farther, that's the thing with cab overs, I won't be able to see the stoplight. That's also why I don't usually run, I only run like factory sun shields. Well, two reasons, I run the factory with uh, sun shields. I mean, there's some cool custom ones, you can put lights on and stuff up there, but two reasons, one being... It, I mean, I like the scenery, and that's why we're here, is the scenery of the drive. And I like to see all of that scenery in front of us. And also, I like to be able to see the signs and the stoplights. Oh, we're not turning here. We're turning at the next one, I think. Glad I saw that. It's happened to look. All right, so I just edited a bunch out because I was supposed to turn left here, but you can see there's two left turns. It was unclear which one to take. And it turns out we want this one. I thought, I don't know why. Anyway, anyway, so I just edited a bunch out because I didn't take this turn. I took the next left turn. I kind of wasn't sure. So I did a loop through town and then, uh, yeah, there was no reason to have that footage. So anyway, here we are on the freeway. It was a little bit confusing. There were several, le several left turns there, but we're on the right one now and headed to, yeah, that one place in Idaho. I'm sure that there's some there's some Americanized pronunciation of the name of the town. That car is really close. Didn't he see me? I saw the yeah, You see that white look like Cadillac coming up behind me. And I kind of had to change lanes, but uh, if he hit my trailer, that was his fault because I was clearly signaling and slowly moving over. Yeah, that was his fault. I saw him coming from a mile away, and I was like, surely he'll slow down. And let us over there. No. Anyway. Wow. Missed turns, which I edited out. And bad drivers aside. Yeah, you know, I don't think, I didn't think that missed turns were going to be an issue on this because we're not taking the freeway. So I figured, well, we're, there's not going to be any off ramps that we'll miss or anything. This is all on the highway. I mean, we're on the freeway briefly here, but uh, we're going to get off up here at what's it called? We're going to get off the freeway and get on to 95 South. Yeah, we're getting off right here. Come on, car. Oh, come on, car. I just kind of got into the left lane there a little bit, trying to wait for him. And hanging right here. Yeah, it looks like the trees are giving away a little bit so we can see some of the scenery. It's already 4 p.m. Wow, where did the time go? If it gets dark, I'll be sure to find a place for us to stop. Because I mainly want to drive during the day. It's looking a little cloudy for 4 p.m. So we got, let's see, so 384 miles. It's a little more distance than last episode. However, last episode, if you saw, it was predominantly lower speed limit and well, parts of it were even on gravel. So we got a little more distance to cover, but 
to be fair, there's a lot of low speed section on 95, which we're turning on right now, I think. 95 south through Idaho. Now, it should be a beautiful road. It's definitely twisty and turny. And it depends if we get stuck behind slow traffic or not, because I think a lot of it's pretty twisty internally, pretty twisty and turny, and only two lanes. We'll see. Oh, wow, we start off by going over a pretty cool looking bridge, though. Bridges always make nice photo opportunities. Turning with a cab over, we want to make sure that we don't turn sh too sharp for the trailer, Just making sure there. Yeah, this could be a really nice view if it wasn't so cloudy, but I'm going to take a picture here just because, and I can clean up the weather and the picture. Let's get over this bridge a little bit. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful like, set of hills up there, and I think we're going to see a lot of that on this road. All right. I just took a second there to get that. Now let's see here. What's our speed limit? 45. All right. It took me a second to find the right. I was trying to clear up the weather and get everything right. Now I'm back in the truck and it's like, oh yeah, we got to drive now. Yeah, it's going to be, this is the kind of views I, I kind of expect on this drive here. Oh, this is cool looking. Oh, it's like a, I thought it was like a rapid. So those were rocks, but no, I looked down there. It's a marina. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I expect a lot of roads like this, two lanes and curvy. So hopefully, yeah, and a lot of no passing zones. So hopefully we don't get stuck behind someone super slow. But the best thing really to do with that is to just, yeah, slow down so you're not riding them and relax. Because we have definitely, there's definitely slow drivers here. They recreate the uh, <laughs> annoying traffic really well. You'll find the occasional really slow driver just like it really is yeah you can get stuck behind some annoying drivers and some of these otherwise beautiful curvy roads so the best thing you can really do is in those cases because i do expect to find those drivers on this road as i have before the best thing you can do is just enjoy the drive you know we're sitting at 55 i'm not sure what the speed limit is i'll have to wait for a sign because yeah i can't really read that up there so that's okay. I mean, I could move the GPS screen and certainly make it bigger down on the dashboard or something, but then it would block out some of the scenery. So instead, I'm taking the opportunity to rely more on signs. I mean, that's always a good thing. definitely not as tight in the trees here we got more space to see there was a lot of places in Washington where there were so many trees that were so tight up against the road you know that uh, it was hard you didn't have much room to see the scenery now what is this that I'm looking at up here I'm gonna have to pull up the map for this because I'm not sure what we're looking at it's telling me to go both ways all right so I just had a look at the map and to see what was going on with the, with the roads up here we're pulling off here for a viewpoint and then getting back on the road. This is the one viewpoint we have. It's the only one we have this time, which is not on our route. Sometimes there's a few ways we're taking off. And this is just a short one, just right over here. So let's see what this is. And the rest, this is actually the only cutscene viewpoint we have. The other two, I think there's two more on the way to our destination and they are just photos. So this is the one cutscene we have. And it's just down here a little ways. Yeah, it's right up there on the map and we're getting back on the road. I had to pause the game and have a look at it because it was like, which way do I go? My map is showing both ways. Oh, so we got a little dirt road action this time too. Not as long as last time. Last time, wow, it was about, I don't know, it was quite a big jaunt up a mountain on a gravel road. Oh, sharp little turn here. Another logging road like last time it looks like. On truck yeah that one was it was longer but it was a little less demanding this one is definitely a little more demanding on the engine and it's right here and hopefully yeah there should be a place to turn around oh there's gotta be so let's just 
just pull off here. Alright, let's check this out. Let's put my brake on, just in case. Would it suck if your truck just started rolling away during the cutscene? I mean, I don't know if it can. I've never had that happen, but I've certainly had my truck start rolling away at stoplights before. So, yeah, I always make sure to hit the parking brake on these. So, yeah, we've got us another logging site here. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, yeah, there's a place to turn around up there, some place of some type. Lots of logging up here in Washington. I've never actually been up into Washington. Sometime i like to see what all is up there. But I imagine, well, of course, yeah, it's going to look like this. All the key places and landmarks are going to be here. And we'll get to see more of this when I, yeah, I'll keep the, I usually use third person camera to drive around tight places like this at low speed so that I can better see where we're at and we'll see more of it as we get out of here. Just put our truck back up. 5.35 p.m. It can't hurt to go ahead and turn on our headlights now so I don't get caught out by that. Parking brake off and yep, start rolling back instantly. Oh jeez, let's come to a stop and yeah, that was, it was really pulling the truck back. Alright, so yeah, a little cab over Peterbilt. I like this truck. I don't usually drive cab overs. So yeah, a little bit of adjustment swapping to this platform for, you know, while I drive this truck. But it's it's fun to have different trucks that you can drive occasionally. There's got to be a way to turn around up here somewhere. Um, you know, I hate to stop on a hill like this. I wonder if I could turn around right here. You know, there might be enough space. Yeah, there is. Like as long as we have a, this wide spot on the road here, we can turn around here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to back it up. I mean, it probably could have whipped a U-turn, but I think it'll be way easier. Maybe slower, but definitely easier. Just back up here. Barely made it on that. I could have hooked it a little more, but we got it enough. I was taking it easy being cab over. Uh, the, the, the front's a lot more responsive, so I was taking it a little easy on hooking it, but that's all right. I'll get the hang of this. So on our way out here, and I think we're gonna wanna set our cruise control on the way out because I think we're going downhill here. Yeah. Yeah, got to speed real quick there. So I'll leave the engine brake on here just because of these sharp turns. Yeah. Yeah, it's much more downhill than it looked. Okay brake was kind of working against me there. It doesn't, it's not great for low speeds, but it's great for keeping you from sliding off a downhill thing. And we're off the steep part anyway. All right, so we're going to get back on the road up here. I wanted to go see that. It's always fun taking little off-road adventures in an 18-wheeler. Back on the road. Stopping this thing, yeah, again, it's this different type of truck, and stopping it, it it's almost like setting off my warning bells, because you gotta, yeah, you, you can pull further, further, far ahead, you know, before you stop, and sometimes I get to what would, in my other trucks, be, yeah, too close, so some of my stops, when I come up behind a car or something, it's like, whoa, I'm gonna hit him, and it's like, no, I'm not, I have to pull up farther in this, anyway, yeah. So I think the speed limit here might be 60. Now let's see, what if I go up 
a little faster. We'll see. A little bit of adventure. Yeah, that road was... I figured it must have been steeper than I thought it was because <clears throat> it was, it was kind of hard to accelerate up some of that. And uh, yeah, on the way out, I sure found how steep it was. Okay, got, got some like a high kind of plateau area here. So I'm pretty sure we must be up there in elevation. High mountain valley. I think we got. I think we've got two photo things coming up somewhere. We got 300 miles left, but somewhere along the way, I think they're kind of evenly spaced, and I marked them on the map, so I'll see them. Should 60, that's the speed limit. Okay. Well, the sky looks better than it did. It was looking rainy, and now it just looks kind of eh, normal, cloudy. As it gets later, what time is it? Seven o'clock. We're gonna start losing the sunlight, so I'm gonna want to look for a place to rest when I see one. That's one thing I didn't look at. Didn't look at rest stops along the way. But it's not. We're not on terribly out of the way back roads. Just kind of highway roads. So there should be something somewhere. Yeah. Well, those are. It's not always that way. Uh, wait, where's this way station? Is it? It's up here. Okay. I saw that and I was like, wait, is it that or this? I didn't see this yet. Turn my thing off here. There we go. And which lane do we want? This lane here, I think. It looks like there's a place to pull over here, but it's not marked as one. I think there's one up ahead, though. Yeah, it looks like it on the map. I don't know. It looks like there's space here, but it doesn't say there is. Hmm, we lost some weight since the last station. I guess uh, it must be fuel. It must count for fuel. Yeah, it's kind of blocked by the window frame. It's the same way on the other side, too. It kind of blocks whoops, one of the key places that you might want to see with a big truck. So I'm hoping that doesn't cause problems. Speed Truck's 35. Okay, yeah, let's slow down then. Yeah, I imagine we're going to see a lot of this. There's going to be a lot of roads like this. We have to go 35. Maybe I can... Let's see. Let's push it up to 40. We've got a retarder on the transmission, and I have the engine brake on. I don't think we're going to get out of control on these turns. Runaway truck ramp. Yeah, I figured it was that kind of road. Yeah, my retarder, I can hear it running in the background, trying to keep us down to 40, which is what I have it set at. All right, so we're gonna to want to keep to the left up here. All right, lane must exit. Yeah, we don't want that. Runaway truck ramp. Definitely don't want that. I know in real life, if you pull into one of those. Well, some of you guys don't live in the mountains. If you, the runaway truck ramps, they have like five foot deep, thick gravel, you know, to slow a runaway truck. It's like several foot deep, thick gravel. And if you pull into one, there's no way to get out. You gotta pay, well, first of all, there's you probably, if you use one in a car, you probably get uh, some kind of ticket. It's probably some kind of against the law to do. 
And second of all, you'd have to pull. I think it's. I think you got to pay like several thousand dollars to get pulled out of one because you can't drive out of one. So there's, to those of you who don't live in the mountains, and don't drive into one of those. That's for trucks only. And getting into one is yeah, it's like several feet thick gravel, I believe, and you'd have to get towed out by some kind of, I don't know. I see them all the time, but I realize some people don't live in the mountains. So some of the ones like. Some of the ones on the steep mountain roads, they're really steep too. Yeah, you know, they like to stop. You know, obviously to stop a seventy thousand pound vehicle, they're really steep. And uh, anyway, about that, just because I was thinking about that as we drove past those. So I was just thinking, I'm going kind of slow, but we got to turn up here anyway. this truck though all right 65 but immediately we have a turn here get up here on this kind of straighter part once this turn is over once we get out of this turn I'm gonna check the map real quick and see if there's a place to stop and rest all right yeah there's one up in the next town of Grangeville that's cool I don't mind driving at this time of day well I don't mind driving at night period I just think it doesn't make the best videos but at this time of day sunset is often a very beautiful time to drive but yeah there's one up in the next town see I haven't yeah this is my first time driving the truck at night how is the dome light on this truck well I put a blue dome light in it considering my dashboard's already blue that's cool because that makes yeah it's very subtle you can kind of just barely see the blue reflection shining off the steering wheel because I got a shiny steering wheel yeah you can kind of see the yeah it makes a little blue reflection on that it kind of lights up the my console over to, to the right a little bit that's cool I was wondering about that I was like well the trucks mostly blue and the dashboard is blue. If I put a, and I have blue, so you can probably see my undercarriage lights. Yeah, and I was like, I have blue undercarriage lights on it. I was like, is a blue dome light too much? And it turns out, no, it kind of enhances the blueness of the dashboard. That's, that's good. You know, that's one of those things you can't really know for sure until, you can't see it until it gets dark out. So here's Grangeville up here. We can stop the rest for the night up here. Yeah, that blue dome light was a good choice because it keeps my my dashboard still looks dark. My gauges still look all dark and stuff, but it just makes the blue dashboard a little brighter kind of. That's cool. I don't like the really obtrusive dome lights that light up the inside of the truck because then, well, it's like driving a car with the dome light on. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. our speed limit 45 all right right up here we got a place to rest right as it's starting to get dark we got us a place to rest at this gas station That's cool. That worked out. I was kind of wondering. I was like, yeah, it's not a mean high, uh, freeway or anything. Let's see. Where do we turn at? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't... Uh, this is probably the first time doing undercarriage lights on one of my trucks. But I figured, hey, let's see if it looks okay. Because the truck's blue. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time looking at my truck from the outside. So, I, yeah, I wouldn't usually see it anyway. And I guess we can pull in beside one of these guys here. Oh, wait. If we go around this way, we can just pull right through. Or I guess we could have pulled through facing the other way, but... Did 
I see rain falling? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, we're not in here perfectly straight, but that's... Oh, we're straighter than I thought we were, actually. Yep, it is definitely raining. I was going to say, I thought I saw raindrops falling on this as I uh, pulled in. Yeah, let's keep this on and... All right, let's just rest here. Let's see, how's it look back here with the dome light on? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, let's rest here. All right, wow, it's quiet in the morning. No rain, I guess. Too quiet. There we go. Yeah, it was like too quiet. I was like, why is it so quiet? This water off my windshield. There we go. My parking brake on. Yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Do we need fuel? Now we're still good on fuel. Yeah, this, uh... I stopped putting, I, I said this last video, I stopped putting points in fuel economy like forever ago because, wait, are my not, lights not on? Yeah, there we go. I stopped putting points in fuel economy because I didn't think it was realistic. You can drive way too far here without getting fuel. I actually stopped putting points there because I like to occasionally get fuel because it's realistic, you know. All right, continue on to Boise from Grangeville. Turn too sharp. Yeah, I barely hit the curb with the last axle there. All right, now down. It's like the longest straight of. Well, one of. The, I mean, as far as roads in this game that I know, this is. It's long and twisty, and I believe two lanes most of the way. So it should be a, a pretty road. Hopefully, we don't get any super slow drivers in front of us. We'll see here. So there's Boise 183. It's just able to read that. Some of those signs, for some reason, can be kind of hard to read as I pass them. I'm not sure if I just need a bigger monitor or what it is. Wow, yeah, it is a pretty road. Nice time of day to be driving it too, I guess. Love taking that's I mean I was gonna say I love taking road trips here but that's kind of a silly thing to say it's, it's what we're doing that's why I love to do in this game it's like the best thing about this is taking road trips I mean sure I love driving a semi yeah and delivering freight but along the way it's so nice to because this is what there is along the way it's like taking a road trip you know a little downhill section here. 35 again. I'll take it down to. I'll take it down a little bit just in case, but. It's not going to find me for speeding or anything. It's just like recommending it go 35. But yeah, we were pretty high up in the mountains where we were up in northern Washington. There's a picture up here, I think. Yeah, there is of whatever we're passing on the left. What I mean, whatever's on the left of this, I'll find out when I get up here. Oh, can I pull over here? Here, let's just pull over here and have a look. Turn off my brake. Yeah, I don't have to pull over anything. I just, realistically, it's a place I would pull over and have a look at. Let's see here. White Bird Battlefield. I'll admit, it's not the most impressive thing to see. No, I thought it might be. So I'll take a picture of that. All right, let's see if we can get back on the road now. I don't see anyone coming. Break on just in case. We are going down a pretty steep hill. Is it on? Yeah. Yeah, it looks really beautiful over there. And then I actually looked over there and it was just kind of a bare thing. I'm sure it has some kind of significance landmark wise.
this truck does, I, I think I said this last video, but yeah, this, this truck sounds nice. This is my second delivery with it. Very impressed with the sound. Very good truck. I've got three trucks now from this mod maker, and I like all three of them. There's still a couple I haven't bought, and I might want to check them out too. I mean, they're very high quality, and this is... Oh, the experience of driving, driving a semi, I want to have trucks that I really like. And this is a classic truck. You don't see a lot of cab overs in America. I say that because I assume you do other places. I assume in Europe it's pretty much all you see, but in America you hardly ever see cab over trucks. If you do, it's there are classic trucks like this from like the 80s. There's just no need for a cab over truck in America. There's plenty of room for big ones, and we don't have any limitations on overall length of a truck. And let's be honest, if you if you crash into a tree, would you rather have a hood in front of you or just a window and nothing else? Yeah, I would imagine regular conventional trucks are a lot safer as just a kind of side thing. Oh, wow, that's a pretty little creek there. That's a side thing. Yeah, I usually drive to conventional trucks and I'm used to them. But there's a certain charm with these little stubby, flat-nosed cab overs that we have here, like the Peterbilts and Kenworths. My neighbor here has an old, and they're parked in their yard, they have an old Kenworth cab over. The turn kind of caught me by surprise there. Only slightly. fifth parallel halfway between something and something I didn't see that much I didn't see that also was yeah it's some kind of landmark here's where we get on to 55 and we take that the rest of the way to Boise wait it says Boise that way but we're going this way um yeah and I didn't modify this part of the route either oh turn my brake off I didn't modify this part of the route it does say Boise right but our GPS says go left. The only place I had to modify our route was that cutscene earlier at that sawmill. And that only just that's just to go in one road and then go back. All right, this goes to Boise as well. Well, obviously it does. 103 miles it says. And I don't think this is the road I was thinking of. There's still another 100 miles. There's another there's a few roads that are like this that are long highways that are just two lanes twisty and turny must be another one I was thinking of that said this has been a nice drive lots of little mountain towns up here and there's a photo of something up here to take oh that lake I'm assuming oh wow oh, boats out there and everything Let's get a picture of that now before the buildings. There we go. Picture of, I guess it's Payette Lake. All right, it's a little picture with the boats over there in the lake. And it's like the road curves. Yeah, I was wondering if we were turning. Now the road just curves up here a little bit. Oh, my trailer. Whoa, close. That was very close. strip mall looks like it's just something about it. it must remind me of a place that I've been it must remind me of some small mountain town strip mall that I have some memory of or something because it looked really cozy something about it but 
do like little mountain towns like this. I can just, of course now it's kind of getting colder, but I mean during the summer, places like this where you want to be a cool mountain air, it's very nice. I thought it was and I'm not disappointed this is a this is a neat little mountain drive I didn't know Idaho was this mountainous but that's all part of this video series touring the Northwest I'd like to get into I think next uh, we might head towards Northern California I'd like to get some in Northern California and a little more in Oregon as well there's a lot of sites up here I'd like to see I just went and took some pictures there. I probably cut that out. I don't like to pull up. Yeah, I don't like to leave the uh, cab of the truck here too much. So anyway, just took a couple pictures. Let's see. For a scenic drive I figured it was a two-lane curvy road which it is and I was expecting you know I was hoping that we wouldn't get stuck behind slow drivers if you recall and so far we've been good on that in fact yeah we haven't had anyone in front of us the entire time so that's been really good just kind of thought about that hopefully it can stay that way I don't like when well the best thing you know yeah someone gets in front of you just kind of slow down because if you just sit behind someone you know and you constantly try to match their speed, that's no fun. Luckily, I haven't had to deal with that. stop I think I had to stop at every way station ever since I pointed out that I hadn't stopped in a while I think since then I've been stopping at every single one of them <laughs> and I don't mind nope we can pass this one and another little town River, the picture we took was at Hyatt Lake. This right here is more of the scenery I was expecting, but yeah, we were in, I mean, going down to Boise, we're getting more into the southern, more southern ish part of Idaho, kind of like central southern. We were in the northern part. This right here is kind of more of the scenery I was expecting, so I was happy that for most of the time, I mean, yeah saw a lot of scenery like well scenery like I was expecting in the northwest but now you know going towards southern Idaho towards Utah we're seeing more like this scenery from Boise well we're going to do this delivery from there we're going to go back west maybe into northern California and southern Oregon I'll see but we haven't really been there yet in this series so that's like a good idea for now we're almost at our delivery point
six miles, it says. Color is the light. Can't see from back here. By the time we get to it, it's probably going to be red. Come on, truck, go. I think I want to turn left anyway up here. No, it looks like a right turn, actually. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah, it looks like... I don't know. It's tough to tell sometimes. Yeah, I think I want to be in the right lane here. Come on, red car. Oh, we turned. Okay, good. This is one of those times when it does this a lot of times. You get close to a delivery, and then it's like the mileage increases. It says six miles, but it's said six miles ever since before that last stoplight. It's like it slows down counting the closer you get sometimes, because we still got a minute to go here. So yeah, we're turning left, but in a very roundabout way. Uh, another stoplight. Oh, yay, not quite. episodes. Both times our primary route has been on highways, which is what I was aiming for for this series anyway, and they just happened to be putting us on highways. This video, you know, we were only catching just at the very beginning and the very end are we catching the freeway. And I assume we're getting off the next exit because we're so close to our destination. Yeah, see, it said six miles like 10 miles ago, at least, maybe 20. It's been a while. This is, it does this a lot. It like slows down the counting as you get closer. Whoops. Are we getting off the next exit? Yeah, I think we are. Boise, kind of on the, I mean, scenery-wise, you know, it's kind of on the edge of the northwest because this kind of looks more like northern Utah. Well, I mean, it's because we're in the same kind of geographical area. So we're kind of, this is like the edge of what I think of as the northwest. I think of, you know, tall pine trees and mountains and lakes. All right, and we're hanging a left up here into our delivery Oh yeah, that's right, we're just delivering used packaging, so I guess like, yeah. Boring, well, I mean, this is not boring, just what's in the trailer is, you know, a little bit. Oh, come just stop there, big guy. see where are we parking this thing I'm still new to backing up the cab over okay this is gonna be a hard one at 90 XP so I'm I take these slow where I would back up faster with a conventional truck I back these up slower as I get the feel for it how is that hard I guess it's hard because it's counting it as a hard one because you have a distance to go back but I don't see that as hard <clears throat> and it's not exactly a straight shot so yeah, I just go slower with this because it's so much more responsive on the steering. So let's just get the trailer turned around here. I want to hook it th 
this way a little bit. Alright, let's see what we're dealing with. We've got all the room room in the world though to go back. As long as we can just snake the trailer in there. Yeah, this thing, the cab on this, whips around so quick uh, to go a little slower. And I want to keep the camera over here until we get to our target. Whoa, yeah, that cab comes around quick. A little bit. There we go. Now, what was so hard about that? Really, that's like seriously easier than some of the, uh, um, 40 XP ones I've done. Just go slow with it, you know. All right, so, yeah, that wasn't for much money, but it was just used packaging. But, hey, I didn't do it for the money. I did it for the scenery and the road trip value of it. That said, you know, while we're driving, my employees are driving as well. So, let's go ahead and get out of here. Ooh, the truck looks nice in this lighting. I like the blue and white. Yeah, this paint job, I saw it. I was like, you know, I just got to have that paint job. Thanks so much for coming with me on this journey down south through Idaho and our Touring the Northwest series. This was episode four, yep. Next time, we're going to pick up here from Boise and head west into northern California or southern Oregon, somewhere about there, and kind of see some more sites up here in northwest. I'll probably be driving the same truck. I like this one. But we'll see. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Leave your comments, any input you have in the video, everything like that is very much appreciated and helpful. Leave that in the, you know, down below. And uh, yeah, subscriptions and things like that really help. So is input. So let me know how we're doing and be sure to subscribe and follow along for more, guys. I'll see you next time, probably in a farming simulator video tomorrow. Yeah, see you guys next time. Thanks so much.